God only allows you so many days here on earth, but he doesn't count the one you spend fishing. Oh my God. Guys, this fish is big. This fish is very big. This is a slob. I'll never forget reading, Life Begins Where Fear Ends. With heavy winds from the north, a long-awaited winter storm followed. To me, this was the perfect recipe to chase trophy winter steelhead that I wait all year for. Join me as I drift into this journey alone, not knowing this would end up being one of the craziest trips of my life. Enjoy. <sighs> of this game heavily dictates how this trip is about to go. Oh my god! It's on, baby. Well, here goes nothing, guys. This is going to be a wild one three to four days on the river, solo. No Steve this time, exploring new winter steelhead water in our beautiful XXL Hooligan raft. Getting this thing loaded up right now and we are on the very front of a large snowstorm coming in, literally as we speak. So it is time to boogie. begins seems like even without Steve we have twice as much gear I don't know how that's possible it's go time and that storm is just kicking in how she's looking. Just a prime example of why having these rafts are so nice. I mean, it's not even two inches deep, three inches deep. I mean, look at how shallow that is. We're just gliding right over. All right, I can't pass up another hogs. We are passing some extraordinary water right now. We're going to start off with a good old spawn bag. Got some juicy king eggs. Not really my proudest spawn, but uh, it should work. It's thawed and it's caught me a couple fish already this year. So just doing a nice little snell knot on 10 pound test, size 8 hook. There we have it. The old bagarinos. I'm going to go with the white bag. Drag her that deep little slot. Come on, baby. That's a fish. That's a fish. That's a fish. Oh, it's a nice one, guys. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Ow. Well, yeah, this one's a kicker, guys. This one's a nice one. This one's got some, got some tail on it. Oh, that is such a satisfying feeling. Steelhead are just a different breed. Oh yeah, it's a jet. <laughs> Gone. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Hook's still good, fish is just gone. Crickets. Longer you fight these fish, the higher the chance you're gonna lose them. That's just how she goes. I just got whooped. That thing had a bright pink cheek, 
chromed out body. That was a nice fish. That's just the way she goes, man. I can't be mad. This is the first spot we've stopped in fish. I mean, just got to keep pressing on. Dang! Now is the time, man. Now is the time that you're going to freaking lay the smack down to a big, big steelhead. Winter it over, big buck. That's what I'd like. I want a big freaking giant buck. I want to make up for that last five day float. If you guys didn't, if you didn't see my last video where I did this, my, my five day float video, at the end, if you remember, I lost a tank, man. I think about that fish still. That fish will haunt me and has continued to haunt me for the last two months. I can't, I can't get over it. I really can't. If I could redeem myself on a fish of that caliber, oh, now we're talking. Start off the new year right after a national championship victory from Michigan. I mean, the stars couldn't align for a more perfect moment. I mean, an 18 to 22 pound steelhead, it just fits the picture. It's perfect. I mean, and it could have <laughs> Bobber just went down. What was a snag? But it could happen any minute. down drifting we're doing that first cast Jesus there we go that looks a little better uh, maybe not teeter tottering again what the heck come on baby go freaking down come on come on baby oh that's a fish there it is oh yeah oh yeah oh it's a big one oh my goodness Oh, this might be huge. Oh no, it's in wood. Oh, it's big, it's big, big. Come on, baby, please get out. Oh, it's rubbing so hard on something. I don't know what it is. Oh, I can feel it through my rod. Oh my God. It is big. <sighs> okay, I think we got them all. Oh my god, I'm shaking. This might be massive. This might be very big, guys. This might be a very large steelhead. It's a big buck. This thing has a paddle on its tail. I am shaking to my boots right now. We got him to the float. He's gonna have to do a big 180 right into this net. I really don't mean to be over dramatic. This is a top five steelhead for me, for sure. Please God, get this fish in the net. This is unbelievable. This is a freak. Just nice, even pressure. Got it. 
Oh my god! Big, big, big. We just, we just scored. Oh my god. Guys, this fish is big. This fish is very big. Oh my god, I haven't even seen its whole body yet. Head is in the water. I might have just pee-peed. I don't know what I'm looking at right now. I'm drifting to the bank. This might be the closest to 20 pounds I have ever touched on a steelhead. This fish has stayed wet the whole time. His head's underwater. We've got the official bump right here. This goes to 40 inches. This bump board is 40 inches. Official measurements. Here goes nothing. <sighs> Nose on the tip. This fish is 35 and a half inches. 35 and a half. 35 and a half by by 20. 35 and a half by 20 inch steelhead. This might be the only look we get of this fish. This is a slob of a steelhead. I mean, this fish has got to be minimum 16, 17 pounds. This is as, as good as they come here in Northern Michigan, and we just got it done on day one. He is breathing. This fish is good. One last look. And then we're going to say goodbye to this absolute perfect fish. Yes. That is truly a giant. Oh my goodness. <laughs> stud, stud, stud. My boots are soaked. My bibs are completely soaking wet. There are so many emotions flowing. I eternally grateful. That's that's all I can say. Definitely one of the biggest fish I have ever landed. An absolute freak. I'm buzzing so hard right now off of that. <laughs> Three o'clock, might, uh, might go get a campsite, but my day's made, the whole trip's made. I, anything at this point is purely just a bonus. I am so thankful. I, I cannot believe I got all of that on camera. I will remember that for the rest of my life. Wow. <sighs> I guess. Oops. Your boy might have had the uh, the gas switch shut off. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Can't believe it ran as long as it did though. Well, evidently, it came to my realization that the next two hours of this trip were recorded in super slow motion, which has no audio. But if I were to be talking right now, I would be emphasizing on the fact that I was soaking wet from all this snow melting, and the storm had really just started to kick in. We were getting gusts up to 35 miles an hour out of the northwest, and the snow had really just started coming down. So my main priority was to just get camp set up, get all my gear dry before the real cold temperatures really start to set in. And I think right about here is where I get my audio back, so. Oh my goodness. I need to get dry as soon as possible. It is soaking in. We gotta get this stuff dry ASAP. Not good. Creeping into the night. All my 
food. It's in my belt. Oh, that lasted long. Spontaneously on my way out the door. Actually, I had forgotten something. I went back to my house to get it and spontaneously made the decision to grab some more stuff. So we're gonna do a little little buddy heater s'more session here. Oh no. I just burned a hole in my tent. <laughs> I'm asking for it really. Like I know what I'm risking by doing this right now. As far as my uh, as far as my decision making goes, but this is my only option to stay warm right now. Never tried that. Buddy heater s'mores. They do work. Wow. With that, I think we're gonna call it a night, guys. And I'm gonna try to get some shut eye because we are gonna be getting up plenty early tomorrow. Not bad. Not bad. I'll see you guys in the morning. I've slept way worse, that's for sure, but I don't know if you can hear it right now, but that wind has been kicking hard. It's It's been 35 mile an hour gusts out of the north, northwest, and that snow, yeah, I think it finally showed up because we definitely got some, some snow action built up around the tent right now. I've been knocking it all morning, but I almost think that it created some sort of insulation around my tent. It kept us a little bit warmer last night, so we're about two hours out from sunrise and probably gonna hit it a little bit earlier this morning, try to cover some ground that we couldn't make yesterday. So, day two. We have a freaking problem right now. Not good. My boat floated away from me last night and I had my anchor out my motor was down this might be my boat right here please for the love of God if yeah there it is that's my boat right there and there's no way I'm getting that that is in the middle of the river I just came down to go throw some stuff into my boat and it is right here. There has to be somebody that fishes today or else I'm screwed. I feel like an idiot, man. Like really, I do. I checked at 5.30 this morning, my boat was still there. And we just got a couple rounds of sweeping gusts and we're in the middle of this hole. Our only options are shimmy out on this right to my boat or we try to poke it free with a giant log, which I'm gonna try to do, and hope that it just blows towards us. But my anchor is dragging four or five feet right now, at least. I brought my anchor way on shore, but clearly not enough. I'm just gonna try to drag this tree into the water and use leverage to try to pry it out. moving it wants to go i think it's going to push me in the right direction come on it's spinning at me this is not a situation you want to be in by yourself getting in that water is not an option right now it's about six feet deep right there so that's just not gonna happen
Yeah, we're getting this. We're in. We're in. That, that wind could have been pointing any other direction and we would have been screwed. Humbling experience. We're putting about 20 feet anchor rope out tonight. I can tell you that. Trust me, I know how dumb this looks, guys. I do not do what I just did. We got lucky. That's what happened. We just got lucky and there's nothing else about it. <sighs> nothing short of a crazy adventure, that is for sure. Day two. I can't believe today has started this way. Get out of here, man. We fished a couple holes, haven't had any any love. We're just now kind of creeping into 10 o'clock, usually in the winter. 10 to 2. It's like my favorite window. I feel kind of cold right now, not gonna lie. I feel feel pretty cold. Gotta embrace the beauty. It's absolutely beautiful out. Everything is snow covered. Looks like a movie out here. I love it. Huh, I got a steel head on. Huh. I was just fixing my anchor and I freaking hooked a steel head. I haven't really gotten a good look at it yet, but it's a great fish. Oh yeah, that's a beaut. That is a beaut. The snow's coming down. You got the icy guides, got a big chrome steel head on, baby. And this rod is corked. Oh, get in there, baby. There it is. Sweet, all right. Not a bad start to the day at all. Very quality fish. Looks like we're getting this into some pretty fishy water. I really want to get one boondog one. I feel like I can do it. Boondog. There's one. Oh, is that a brown? It's a skipper. Oh, you know what? I know you guys are thinking what I might be thinking. If he's stocked, I'll do it. If he's not, I'm not doing it. If he's not a stocked, yeah, he's he's a wild fish. I'm not killing him. He does look pretty tasty, not gonna lie. It is a boy too. I you know what? Like, to be honest with you guys, like I'd be eating this fish for content. And that just feels weird. If you guys didn't know, this is their marking for a uh, a wild fish. That little fin right there. Natapos would have been a good eater, but so long, buddy. I feel like I've had to address lately is everyone was giving me crap for not keeping my steelhead to eat. And they're like, why did you bring fish and not kill the fish? Because I don't need it. I thought about it. I'm not going to lie. I thought about keeping that one, but we got food tonight, though. We're going to have glizzies. I don't know. I, I, I hate that, though. People, people giving me crap on my videos like, why don't you keep those fish? What are you doing? Why are you fishing and not eating them? It's like, I don't know. I know I know a lot of you guys understand, but it's like to to the broader audience, like it's such a it's such a common thing I come across. It's so weird. That's a fish. Yep, that's a fish. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a nice one too. Oh, that was beautiful. That was so satisfying. Big buck. That was a big one. Not calling numbers, but that was a big one. As soon as he came to the surface, that's when we lost him, so. I thought I was on it, really. Second that thing dropped, I hammered it. Came up, big head shakes, and just got off. Simple as that. But that's just the way she goes. For the sake of new viewers, I'll show you guys what's up running a five inch 
Kingfisher John Milner reel here. It's a center pin reel. Had questions, is this a fly reel? No. Next, we've got the eight to 15 Mags custom rod. It's a moderate fast 12 foot rod. And right now I'm actually running a bobber leader. So up top on my main line, I have a micro swivel that's coming down to 14 pound test, FC sniper. Then we've got that coming to a Brian Lee Smith custom float, Silver Wolf custom, 10 gram float. And I believe we have five size seven water gremlin split shot. Got that paired up to a nice 16, 18 inch liter of 10 pound test, snell knotted to a size six Raven wide gape hook. Hey, Papa. Oh, uh, just out steelhead fishing, you know. I you caught a monster. Oh my gosh, I just caught, yesterday I caught one that was 35 and a half inches and it was had a 20 inch girth on it, big red male. Wow. Yep. Oh, great. You making movies here? Yeah, I am. Yeah, they allowed me in the movie, I always like that. <laughs> oh yeah? If you have something to say, now would be the time to say it. If I have something to say? Yes, if you have something to say for the movie, you could say it right now, I suppose. Oh, well, I would say, well, um, God only allows you so many days here on Earth, but he doesn't count the one you spend fishing. <laughs> that, that's some pretty good wisdom right there. Yeah, it is. I've been doing that all my life. It's worked so far. Okay, love you. Thanks for picking up. You always pick up. That's good. <laughs> love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Really cannot pass the hole like this up. That would be stupid. Hopefully it's worth it. That's fish. Yep, 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 yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, figure out where the heck I'm gonna sleep tonight. It's a tough angle to Try and knock this thing up. There he is. Oh, I got a killer pump in my forearm right now. All right, you guys know the drill. Chuck him up. Actually, a little bigger than I thought. He's not giant, but you gotta love them when I get their colors like this. Right in the schnoz beanos. Last bag of the day. Okay, out. Very quality steel it. Alright, let's go get a campsite. I could happily end the, the day on that for sure. Alright, we gotta find a campsite ASAP. It's time to go. Choice. Just in the nick of time. At zero point in this entire day have I eaten anything. So I'm gonna try to build a fire before the sun goes down and we're about to feast. So for Christmas, one of the gifts that my grandma got me were handmade fire starters made out of laundry lint and a toilet paper roll. Come on. See if it can get a fire started. It's gonna be probably kind of tough to get this fire going. 
Right. Hasn't gone out on me yet. Good stuff, Grandma. I'm gonna let this burn down a little bit, and then we're gonna have some burgers and brats. Randy Bobandi, quick hitter special right off the river. Nice. Hey, now my iPhone's freaking tweaking out right now. Let's get our bed set up. Guys, we might be in a pickle right now. I'm going to keep it real with you. For some reason, my iPhone will not take a charge to save my life. It is dead, dead. I plugged it into my Jackery. I've plugged it into three different external batteries, all of which are charging my camera gear completely fine. I have over 10 miles left in this float, and I planned it completely off. I was thinking I'd be able to do the float that I'm doing right now in three days, but there's no way I'm doing this in three days. And so that leaves me with two options. Initially, what I kind of planned on doing in the back of my head was I'll wake up, I'll fish tomorrow, and I'll readjust my spotter. But now I can't even contact my spotter. And there's no way I'm getting this next chunk of float done in a day. It's I sit here all night in the dark, no point of contact to move my vehicle. And I just wake up in the morning and I try to hitchhike my way back to my vehicle. Or I just get it over with and do it right now. And honestly, I don't know why, but I feel the urge to do that. I don't know what kind of human beings will be hanging around the boat launch right now, considering it's dark. Regardless, I don't want to leave my boat on the side of the river unattended. It's just overall uh annoying situation, really. Something that I don't want to be doing at all, period. But, I mean, the plan was to just fish tomorrow call my spotter and be like hey would you mind to slide me up a little bit which would have been no problem could have got done but i can't it's not even an option anymore so we might be uh we might be bugging overnight i have thought about it we're going the psychotic route i am packing this entire campsite up right now throwing it all into my boat row our way in the dark dock at the crossroad downstream from here I'm going to try to walk to a gas station to see if somebody there will let me plug in my iPhone to see if it's my cord or not. And depending on what happens right there, we're either going to walk back to our boat and we're going to reset up camp somewhere along the crossroad. Or I am going to hitchhike my way back to my truck. I can't believe I'm doing this right now. But it's the only thing that makes logical sense. I'm going to have to wake up and do it anyways. My biggest fear is just leaving my boat course but packing it all up we're getting out of here all right guys praying my stuff stays safe do you know how unsmart this feels Please just be a freaking charger. Phone charger by any chance? I don't know. I have one in my car. Oh, so I gotta figure out what the heck's going on with my phone. Oh, the truth right here. We'll see it. I think my iPhone got fried. Some, something happened to my iPhone. 
Is there like a cab service around here or anything? Oh, it, it might it might be turning on right now. Ooh. Oh my god, please. <laughs> what a turn of events. This video is done. I'm not doing another night of camping. I had the intuitive feeling to just pack up all my gear and send it downstream because my iPhone was tweaking out. And I, there's really no apparent reason. I don't know why I did it. Not very like me to just make some crazy decision like that out of the blue. And I'm glad I did. I, I essentially floated for about 30 minutes downstream until we hit the crossroad. And I anchored my boat up, absolutely terrified me. I left all my gear inside of my boat and I, I booked it on foot and I went all the way into town here and I just, I went to go buy a charger. I walked into a Dollar General and sure enough, it, it was my actual charging cable, thankfully not my phone. Plug it in, still doing the on off weird thing. And then the Apple logo shows up, it boots up, everything went to normal and my phone just blew up. I had text from my mom, my dad, within two minutes, of my phone turning on, I get a call from the sheriff's office asking me if everything's all right and yada yada. My parents are trying to like contact me. They're all freaking out thinking I went missing and shit. Dude, oh my God. Like who knows what would have happened. If I would have stayed out there and just let them high and dry, <laughs> who knows, maybe there'd be a search out for me, but everything happens for a reason. And I'm glad that I made that decision. That was the right decision for sure. I think uh, this video is gonna have to continue another time. Like I said, I wanted to do a three day float. I put a little bit too much on my plate, more than I could handle in this time frame. And these guys were so kind to actually give me a ride back to my spot and also watch my boat in the meanwhile. I think we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to finish this video up someday. Maybe we'll bring somebody out. Maybe I'll bring one of you guys out, but the rest of the river is gonna have to wait. I hope you guys enjoy the video absolutely crazy adventure. I wouldn't change a single freaking thing. Happy New Year. I'll see you in the next one.